From forgotten tools and an operation on the wrong side. They messed up in the this side and then the this side. To tests that cause bald spots. Hair loss. I had a perfect ring around my head. And metal deadly close to a magnet. We're counting down my list of 25 shocking medical mistakes. Mistakes are happening every day in every hospital in the country that we're just not catching. It's the third leading cause of death in this country. For the most part, we're silent on it. What you can do to not become a victim. I'm Elizabeth Cohen. I'll show you how to become an empowered patient. With the help of world-renowned patient safety expert, Dr. Peter Pronovost, American Cancer Society Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Otis Brawley, acclaimed medical fiction author, Dr. Abraham Verghese, and more. Stay tuned. This hour could save your life. At number 25, baby security breach. The woman in this surveillance video, Jennifer Latham, tells her family she's expecting a baby when really she isn't. So she decides to steal one. Take a look as she changes into nursing scrubs, enters a baby's room, comes out with a bag under her arm. A baby is in that bag. The imposter nurse actually gets off the premises with the child, despite an alarm on the baby. The alarm went off as it was supposed to. The woman just managed to get out the door. The baby is gone, missing for almost two and a half hours until a police officer spots the getaway car and pulls the baby snatcher over. That's the newborn at that back there. Listen as Jennifer lies to the officer, telling him the baby in the car is hers. You gave birth today? No. Not today? Not today? Not today? This cop isn't buying any of it. Jennifer Latham is arrested, and the baby is returned safely back to mom and dad by ambulance. What kind of person would want to steal a baby? Most people who steal babies actually want that baby for themselves. And hospitals are a great place to get babies. Since 1983, 132 babies have been abducted from U.S. healthcare facilities. Make sure your eyes or a real nurse's eyes are on your baby at all times in the hospital, because every so often, a baby snatcher is eyeing them too. At number 24, fake doctors. But I don't want to lie to you anymore, all right? I'm not a doctor. I never went to medical school. Like Amy Adams' character in Catch Me If You Can, Tammy Petit thinks she marries a physician. Every morning, I would drop him off at the hospital. Until her husband, Eric, pleads guilty to impersonating one. I was told that at the time he was arrested, he and a nurse were taking a patient from the emergency room into the intensive care unit. The hospital says he escapes notice by wearing scrubs and a real doctor's ID badge. Anyone who fakes being a medical doctor is fundamentally a con artist or a scammer. Incredible medical mistakes have been made by these fake physicians. This man, Arthur Copes, also turns out not to be a doctor. He advertised extensively on websites saying that he could straighten out the most crooked of spines. Serafina Gerling sees the ads. She thinks Copes is a doctor who can correct her scoliosis. She wears Copes' brace for six months, and her curves get even worse. I'm extremely worse, and I'm in an extreme amount of pain. The people who will fall for these uh, fake doctors usually are extremely vulnerable. It is that persona, that ability to gain the patient's trust, that respect, that white coat, and that ability to smile and get that person to talk to them and trust them that allows the fraud to continue. The Federation of State Medical Boards lists hundreds of imposters who've masqueraded as doctors in America. Miss Mace. Unless it's Leonardo DiCaprio examining you, go online and make sure your doctor is a licensed physician in your state. At number 23, treating the wrong patient. Carrie Higuera is bleeding three months into her pregnancy. She fears she's about to lose her unborn baby to a miscarriage. She's waiting in a hospital room when a nurse comes in and asks if her name is Carrie. Carrie says yes and follows the nurse to a CT scan room. The nurse tells Carrie a doctor wants a scan of her abdomen and they give her the scan, even though Carrie is three months pregnant. 
If you're radiating the abdomen, by definition, the baby is going to be in the field of radiation. The baby is going to get radiated. That CT scan is a mistake. The hospital has confused Carrie with another patient named Carrie. The scan in the pregnant woman will increase the risk that that child will get leukemia. At that early stage in gestation, the fetus is also at risk of getting birth defects. Fortunately, Carrie's son Nathan is doing just fine. How do they confuse patients? It often happens with people who have similar names. So especially for common names, Jane Smith, there may be two or three Jane Smiths on a common hospital floor. Before every procedure in the hospital, make sure the staff checks your entire name, your date of birth, and the barcode on your wristband. At number 22, Pharmacy Faux Pas. Marina Silva is six weeks pregnant. She picks up a prescription for antibiotics at the pharmacy. She takes the medicine and then sees the label is wrong. I came back and I looked at the bottle and it wasn't my name. The pharmacy has given Marina a prescription meant for another woman who has the same last name and a similar first name. The medicine isn't an antibiotic. It's actually methotrexate, a drug that has the potential to terminate pregnancies. Well, you'd never, ever want to give a drug like that to a uh, pregnant patient. This is my first child, so it's really difficult to deal with. My baby could have deformities. There's a lot that goes with it. Things get hectic behind the prescription counter and an onslaught the phones ringing, messages, patients coming in. Pharmacists pull medications from the shelves. You might pull the wrong drug, the wrong strength. We're dealing with a dangerous situation. You don't want to take the wrong medication. At neighborhood pharmacies every year, 30 million prescriptions are dispensed improperly. When you're at the pharmacy, open the package and show the medicine to the pharmacist to make sure it's right and make sure your name is on the label. At number 21, botched plastic surgery. Marilyn Lease wants to look a little younger, but after eyelid surgery, she's unable to fully close her eyes. That's how it is every day, 24-7, 365 days a year. Living with a mistake is bad enough. Can you die from a plastic surgery? Oh, absolutely, it is possible to die from plastic surgery. We've seen it happen. Take the case of this beauty queen. Argentinian model Solange Magnano wants a bigger butt. Why would a woman want a bigger butt? There are men out there who like big butts. We are a culture that wants to feel attractive, and if that's what uh, makes us feel more attractive, then they want a bigger butt. The beauty queen goes in for the operation and then dies five days later. Here's where some experts think the surgery goes wrong. Whatever doctors inject into her butt to make it bigger, fat, silicone, or something else, a piece of it breaks off, tears through the bloodstream, then lodges in her lungs. Without blood flow to her lungs, Solange struggles to breathe. It's called a pulmonary embolism. Death is a crazy price to pay for beauty, so make sure your surgeon is certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. At number 20, dosage disasters. Movie star Dennis Quaid's twins, Thomas and Zoe, develop an infection a few days after they're born. The Quaid's take the babies to the hospital for a course of antibiotics. A blood thinner called heparin is used to prepare their IVs. When you have an IV, there's a very, very, very dilute dose that they'll put a minuscule amount in the IV so that the IV doesn't clot up. When the babies get the IV, their blood unexpectedly turns thin as water. At one point, as the doctors tried to clamp a bleeding wound in the remnant of T-Boone's umbilical cord, blood spurted six feet across the room and splattered on the wall. Doctors realize someone has given the babies a massive overdose of heparin, a thousand times more than it's supposed to be. They didn't notice that it was the wrong dose. Here's how that overdose happens. The adult dose was in a dark blue vial. The pediatric dose was in a light blue vial. A technician accidentally puts the adult dose of heparin in the location where the children's dose is usually stored. Then a nurse grabs the bottle without checking it. 
and our babies could have died that night. Thankfully, doctors managed to control the bleeding and the twins make a full recovery. Workers stocking medication drawers make mistakes about 4% of the time. When you're in the hospital, ask for a daily list of medications and dosages and check them when they arrive. Ahead on my list, you won't believe where this patient ends up after brain surgery. And tools left and forgotten in the worst place possible. We've already seen some bad medicine, counting down our 25 shocking medical mistakes. Dosage disasters came in at number 20. At number 19, toxic transplants. Joshua Hightower needs a new kidney. He's on a list waiting his turn for the life-saving organ. A potential donor dies. Joshua gets one of the man's kidneys. And then suddenly, instead of getting better, he gets sicker. He was throwing up headaches, had the shakes real bad, sleeping a lot. Within months, Joshua is dead at age 18. A doctor tells his mother he died of rabies. And I said, what do you mean rabies? Like some foreign branch of rabies or some kind that is, you know, uncommon or rare? And he, I said, or the kind that you vaccinate your dog every year for. And he said, Jennifer, the kind you vaccinate your dog every year for. And just how does this teenager get rabies, a virus that's spread by animals? That new kidney he gets is infected with rabies before it even gets inside his body. Here's what happened. The organ donor has been bitten by a bat, but no one knows it. The virus spreads through the bloodstream. No one suspected that this person had rabies. All the organs were transplanted and all the recipients contracted rabies. Only later do doctors realize the donor had all the symptoms of rabies from the beginning, and they never should have used his organs. There's thousands and thousands of potential pathogens out there that organ donors could be infected with. Rabies is so uncommon, the screening tests for rabies are not universally available. In the U.S., more than 100 people have been victims of similar toxic transplants. After a transplant, if you get sicker instead of better, ask if the other recipients from the same donor are also sick. Early treatment could save your life. At number 18, dumb discharge. James Abstin undergoes brain surgery. He goes back to the hospital for more testing. The staples are still fresh in his head when the staff packs him off alone in a taxi cab. Most patients who are being discharged from the hospital should not be going home alone in a taxi cab. James is so disoriented, he doesn't know his own address. I was, I was confused. Strangers find him asking for help after the taxi drops him off in an unfamiliar neighborhood. He was in a hospital gown in only socks. It was wet, raining, cold out. Um, he had bandages and staples in his head still from his surgeries. These good Samaritans helped James get home after his careless release. A lot of people feel woozy when they leave the hospital, so make sure you have a ride home from someone who knows where you live. At number 17, ambulance errors. A lot can go wrong on the way to the hospital. Darlene Dukes is struggling to breathe. She calls 911 and tells the operator where she is. 602 Wells Drive. 602 Wells Drive? Yeah. Instead of dispatching an ambulance to Wales Drive, the dispatcher sends paramedics to Wells Street, W-E-L-L-S, 27 miles away from Darlene. Darlene dies from a blood clot, police say, after an ambulance takes more than 45 minutes to find her. Shocking, very, very critical amount of time in, in terms of the response time necessary to save somebody's life. When you call 911, slowly say and spell out the name of the street address. At number 16, lost patients. Nursing home patient Mary Cole turns up missing during a bed check. Finding her becomes a manhunt. Noted on her missing person poster, 
she suffers from Alzheimer's disease and may be disoriented. Her daughter, Tammy Terry, clings to hope and joins the search. We go from morning until pitch dark. Four days go by until Mary is finally found inside the nursing home, locked in a storage closet. I believed and trusted them when they said we searched every room, every nook and cranny, we moved furniture, and it was a lie. Mary is severely dehydrated and dies soon after. The family's lawyer says Mary wandered into that closet and got trapped. My mom suffered for four days. And there's no excuse for it. One in five nursing home patients is prone to wandering. If your loved one sometimes wanders, consider getting them a GPS bracelet that tracks their every move. At number 15, surgical souvenirs. Nelson Bailey comes out of surgery with a sponge left in his abdomen, a foot long by a foot long. When they opened me up, uh, the medical report shows that it was rotting. It created perforations in my intestines. Here's how a sponge can get left behind by mistake. There's often blood, there's tissue. It's very difficult to see. And sometimes sponges are tucked under an organ inside you that they're not in clear view, but they're soaking up some fluid or blood. Take a look at this similar mistake. That's a six inch clamp. And this is a 13 inch retractor. Nurses are supposed to keep track of how many tools go inside you and make sure the same number come out. Sometimes the initial count going in is wrong, the count going out is wrong, and mistakes happen. Something gets left behind in as many as two out of every 10,000 surgeries. If you have unexpected fever, pain, or swelling after surgery, ask if you might have a surgical memento buried within. Ahead on my list, air keeps us alive so how does it kill this young man? And a mix-up at the maternity ward that leaves moms bonding with the wrong baby. The healthcare harm is stacking up as we count down our 25 shocking medical mistakes. Surgical souvenirs came in at number 15. At number 14, baby switcheroos. Come here, sweetie. Oh, my God. What? Wrong baby. What? what? Wrong baby. Like Pam from the office, Monica Garcia is the victim of a baby mix-up. She gives birth to her son, Marcelino. In the nursery, he needs to eat. And a hospital worker hands the baby over to a stranger with the same last name. The wrong mother breastfeeds Monica's baby. It's just hard for me to accept that, you know, my child has been with somebody that I don't even know. I'd like to think that I would know if someone brought me a baby that wasn't mine. You might and you might not. Most babies look pretty similar. They're all kind of just cute little cheeky things. And they're not that easy to distinguish one from the other, especially if you've only seen it once or twice. So even a loving mother might confuse one baby for another baby. Right. A loving mother will love the baby that she has brought. When a nurse hands you your baby, ask the nurse to match your baby's ID band with yours. At number 13, air bubbles in blood. After weeks in the hospital, 19-year-old Blake Fout is excited to be going home. Before he can leave, Blake has to do just one last thing. Have a central line in his chest removed. While he's sitting upright, a nurse removes the tube and then seals it with gauze. You could hear popping from the central line site, and it was just... That's called a sucking wound, and what it was doing was sucking air right into the, the vessels. It's called an air embolism, and that air is killing Blake. The air was cutting off the blood supply to his lungs and to his heart, to his kidneys, and to his brain. The nurses failed to follow basic rules on removing a central line. Blake should have been lying down, and the nurse should have sealed the hole airtight with Vaseline. 
This doctor is Blake's mother. She's only a medical student at the time of the mistake and doesn't know how to stop it. She begs the staff to do something, but no one calls for a doctor until it's too late. We went from planning a surprise party to planning a funeral. Most heart-wrenching thing I had to do was to go and wake my daughter up and tell her that her brother was not coming home ever. And I just, it was most, it was horrible. While there's no national figure, you should know a report looking at just one hospital's ICU finds improperly removed central lines cause 10 air embolisms a year. If you have a central line in you, ask how you should be positioned when the line comes out. At number 12, misdiagnosed. Morgan McCracken gets socked in the head with a baseball. Mom and dad ice the bump down. The seven-year-old seems fine until two nights later when she cries out for help. Mom, mom, my head, it's hurting. She was holding it, saying, my head's hurting, my head's hurting. The McCrackens rush Morgan to the emergency room. We couldn't get to the hospital fast enough. I carried her in. She was too lethargic to walk. A doctor says, don't worry. I'm sure it's just late, she's tired, she probably has a touch of the flu. A gut feeling tells these parents the doctor has Morgan's diagnosis wrong. This wasn't our Morgan. She's had the flu before, and this wasn't how she acted. They ask for a CT scan of her head, but the doctor won't listen. What is the consequence of a doctor not listening to you? They are failing to hear the first manifestation of a life-threatening illness and they're failing to register and therefore look on your body for the first clues of that and begin to order the right tests. After hours of begging, the doctor finally does listen and orders the CT scan. Here's what he missed, a blood clot inside Morgan's skull. A surgery saves her life. One out of every 10 diagnoses you receive from a doctor may be wrong. Like Morgan's parents, you should trust your instincts. If a diagnosis doesn't sound right to you, get a second opinion. At number 11, transfusion confusion. Blake Oliver feels sharp pain in his stomach. He goes to the hospital. He needs surgery and a blood transfusion. The new blood has to match his blood. Some people are O type blood, some people are A type blood, some people are B type blood. You can't transfuse the different types of blood into each other because your body interprets it as an invading bacteria. To know Blake's blood type, his blood needs to be drawn and tested. Instead, a mistake is made and all that testing is done on Blake's hospital roommate. The roommate's blood, being A positive, was labeled Blake Oliver and given to him, transfused. The A-type blood mixes with Blake's O-type blood. It can cause the blood cells to rupture, and when they rupture, they can clog up your organs. It can cause kidney failure. It's called the hemolytic reaction. That new blood kills Blake. It was just the most awful, ridiculous scenario in that it could have been one 100% prevented. One out of every 19,000 units of blood is administered incorrectly. Know your blood type, so if you're getting blood, you can check the bag to make sure it's a match. At number 10, getting burned. Paramit Singh expects his heart bypass to go smoothly. Yeah, no big deal, just I, I want to maybe go home in the same day. Monitoring cables are snaked through Paramit's heart, but the monitor malfunctions and the cables get so hot, the inside of his heart is cooked. The damage irreparable and Paramit has to get a new heart. Rocky Rockenback also gets burned in the hospital when doctors turn his throat into a blowtorch. Here's how it happens. During surgery, a balloon is inflated in Rocky's throat to block anesthesia gases in his lungs from rising up. A surgeon's laser punctures a hole in the balloon. The gases flow into Rocky's throat. 
Instead of stopping the surgery, the doctor continues. The laser's heat sparks the gases and fire explodes. Now, Rocky has to breathe with a plastic tube. How could a hospital burn a patient in a surgery? These accidents usually occur because of multiple errors that occurred in setting up for the operation. Because there's a lot of equipment that involves electricity, that involves the use of gases and other things that are flammable. These are terrible errors. 240 surgical fires break out every year in U.S. operating rooms. Lasers and cables can generate a lot of heat, so ask if your surgery will use them and how you'll be protected. Ahead on my list, we all know our left from our right, so how does this boy's surgeon get so confused? And a routine test goes wrong and leaves patients partially bald. We've seen a baby get switched and a patient misdiagnosed, counting down our list of 25 shocking medical mistakes. Getting burned came in at number 10. At number nine, look-alike tubes. Alicia Coleman is born three months premature, a disease all but destroys her intestines. To keep her alive, doctors insert a feeding tube into her stomach and a central line tube into her vein. One day, Alicia's mom drops her off at a medical daycare center and heads to work. I handed her over on um, Saturday at 8.17 and I got the call at 9.20 that her medication had been administered wrong. A central line tube and a feeding tube look a lot alike. The daycare center pumps medicine meant for Alicia's stomach into her vein. The medicine stops this toddler's heart and she dies. <laughs> I've never got she had to go through it alone and I wasn't there. Is it easy to confuse tubes? We should be very cautious. Uh, unfortunately, people get rushed, people cut corners, and when that happens, uh, tragic things can happen. 16% of doctors and nurses in a survey say tube mix-ups happen at their hospitals. So the lesson here is, when you have tubes in you, ask the staff to trace the tubes back to the point of origin so the right medicine goes to the right place. At number eight, biopsy blunder. Something unusual turns up in 35-year-old Derry Eason's breast. Is it cancer? Doctors do a biopsy. Her diagnosis, positive, invasive lobular carcinoma. This single mom has breast cancer. She gets a second opinion. Two more experts look at her lab work and agree. Derry decides she has to be aggressive to save her life. She has surgery to remove both her breasts. And then weeks later, a bombshell admission by her doctors. They told me, uh, basically, you didn't have cancer and you never did. What makes doctors think she's sick? That biopsy showing she has cancer actually belongs to someone else. A health department investigation says a lab technician is most likely working with two specimens at the same time. By mistake, the worker takes another woman's tissue and puts it inside a container labeled with dairy's identification. Something should have been done to tell me that there wasn't anything wrong with me before I had a radical double mastectomy. You make the diagnosis with a biopsy and for sure there could be a domino or butterfly effect that occurs from um, having a mistake in that initial um, biopsy where everybody starts to make a decision based on that initial biopsy or error. One out of a thousand lab specimens is mislabeled. If your surgeon, radiologist and pathologist don't all agree on your biopsy results, ask if you should repeat the test or get another opinion. At number seven, having the wrong baby. Carolyn and Sean Savage want a baby after four miscarriages. They turn to a fertility lab for help. The couple thinks their embryos are placed in Carolyn's uterus until 10 days later when the lab calls with unbelievable news. We were pregnant, but at the same time that 
they had uh, transferred another couple's embryos to Carolyn. The baby growing inside Carolyn doesn't belong to her. It actually belongs to this woman who has the same last name, Shannon Savage. So I'm thinking this woman has got to be a basket case. And then find out she's pregnant, oh, by the way, with somebody else's kid. Here's how the embryos wind up in the wrong womb. To locate where the frozen embryos are stored, a lab worker, by mistake, uses Shannon Savage's paperwork instead of Carolyn Savage's. The worker pulls Shannon's embryos from a cryopreservation tank and places them on a Petri dish with the name Savage on it. Nine months later, knowing she was having someone else's baby, Carolyn gives birth to little Logan and then gives him up to his real parents. You say hello to everybody. Say hi. Hey, hello. Hi. To think that a woman carried someone else's baby, albeit by accident, uh, to term and, and then had to hand that child over to that couple, not achieving her own pregnancy. I mean, first of all, she's an amazing woman, and secondly, it's a, it's a tragedy. Happily, Sean and Carolyn recently had twins, Isabella and Reagan, with the help of a surrogate. Mistakes like this are exceedingly rare, but they do happen. Hi. Nine months in the wrong mom is no way to have a baby. So if you're getting fertility treatment, make sure the clinic is accredited by the College of American Pathologists. At number six, operating on the wrong body part. Jesse Matlock has a wandering right eye. The three-year-old needs surgery to have it fixed. He goes in for the operation, and the surgeon cuts into the left eye instead of the right. My husband and I were in awe. We're like, can you repeat that again? And she said, frankly, I lost sense of direction. They messed up in the this eye and then the this eye. Surgeons are supposed to initial or mark the correct side like they did with Jesse. But here's one way they can still get confused. We place uh, drapes over the entire area to keep it sterile. Mistakes can be made very rarely when you have draping that obscures the mark. In the U.S., seven patients every day suffer body part mix-ups. Just before surgery, make sure you confirm with the nurse and the surgeon the correct body part inside of your operation. And don't be shy about doing it. At number five, radical radiation. This isn't a bad haircut, it's the damage done by too much radiation. Michael Heuser goes in for a CT scan of his head. Clumps of hair fall out. Suzanne Sloan, same thing. And same for Donald Biggles. I had a perfect ring around my head. Here's how their hair falls out. The hospitals program the CT scanner wrong and repeatedly scan these patients with monster doses of radiation. Michael gets eight times the allowable dose. The well-publicized images that we saw of patients who got CT scans of the brain who had hair loss in a very clear distribution, that was the area with a lot of repetitive imaging where the doses got up very high. Basically, the hair cells got destroyed by the radiation. The fallout from that dangerously high amount of radiation wasn't just hair loss. Donald, Michael, and Suzanne have to worry that all that radiation could give them cancer. If possible, instead of a CT scan, get an ultrasound or an MRI, because they have no radiation at all. Still ahead on my list, metal and an MRI are a bad combination. And an unbelievably long ER wait costs this toddler her limbs. The one call you can make to speed things up during an emergency. We've shown you flukes and blunders counting down 25 shocking medical mistakes. Radical radiation made our list at number five. At number four, infection infestation. Skydiver Josh Nahum parachutes to Earth. The landing goes badly. Josh's leg breaks. His skull fractures. He's on the mend in the hospital when he catches an infection from the hospital. Nobody ever thinks that they're going to go into a hospital only to be made more ill. Doctors are powerless to fight the bacteria raging through Josh's body. 
what we're seeing now, and it's really concerning, is there's a growing list of gram-negative bacteria that are resistant to many, if not most, antibiotics. And we have no drugs to treat these patients with. Josh dies at 27. Here's one way infections spread. One patient may have an infection and a nurse or a doctor is caring for both of them. I go in and I examine them or I touch them and my hands get contaminated. I then don't wash my hands and go talk to the second patient or examine the second patient. And I introduce that infection into that second patient. And in many senses, we're no different than a mosquito causing malaria. We're, you know, a vector introducing harm rather than protecting patients. Another way, a needle pierces dirty skin. Your skin is an amazing defense against bacteria. But when I break that skin, I allow bacteria to enter. Hospitals kill 75,000 people a year with these infections. It may be uncomfortable to ask, but make sure doctors and nurses wash their hands before they touch you, even if they're wearing gloves. At number three, metal in the MRI room. Six-year-old Michael Colombini has brain cancer. He's getting an MRI. An MRI machine is a very large, very, very powerful magnet. A hospital worker walks into the room carrying a metal oxygen tank. The oxygen tank flies out of the worker's hands, shoots across the room, strikes Michael in the head, and the little boy dies. Take a look at this video researchers make after Michael's death. It shows just how fast that metal oxygen tank kills him. While this mistake is relatively unusual, reports to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration reveal additional cases. When you're getting an MRI, make sure there's no metal on or around you. At number two, the ER waiting game. Two-year-old Malia Jeffers has a 101-degree fever, a bruise on her cheek the size of a marble, trouble walking. Her parents rush her to the emergency room. A nurse says it's a virus and tells the family to wait. So they do, for nearly five hours. Malia's fever climbs higher. Her bruise gets bigger. She can't even stand up. Mom and dad ask for help again and again, but the hospital says keep waiting until finally, Malia's father barrels past the nurse's station into the ER and begs. The real diagnosis, shameful. A flesh-eating bacteria is rapidly spreading through the toddler's tiny body. Any break in the skin can occasionally become infected. If you're unlucky enough to be infected by a particularly virulent strain of bacteria and it gets into your bloodstream, it can kill you. Her liver failed, but uh, every other major organ was probably also failing at the same time. They missed the fact that she was desperately ill. To save Malia's life, doctors have to amputate her entire left hand, fingers on her right, and both her legs. Is it always obvious who should come first in an emergency room? You can't always tell when someone really needs to be seen right away and who, can, who could afford to sit and wait, even if it ruins their day. On average, you can expect to wait 49 minutes in the emergency room before a doctor or nurse sees you. Here's a tip. Doctors listen to other doctors. So when you're on your way to the hospital, call your physician and ask them to call the emergency room so they know you're on your way and it's serious. Still ahead. It just goes on and on, and you're screaming inside your head. The most shocking medical mistake on my list. We've seen doctors with dirty hands, a freak MRI accident, and now we're at the end of my list of 25 shocking medical mistakes. The ER waiting game came in at number two. And at a shocking number one, waking up during surgery. You go in, you go under. That's the way surgery is supposed to go. 
but it doesn't always happen that way. There was a pain. There was a pain that you cannot deal with. It just goes on and on, and you're screaming inside your head. They're on the operating table, paralyzed, unable to move or speak. They feel every poke, every prod, every cut. I just kept praying, God, please just knock me out. Just knock me out. Let somebody know that this hurts so bad. Their nightmare is called anesthesia awareness. Under anesthesia, your muscles are paralyzed and your brain is unconscious. But without adequate anesthesia, your brain can stay awake and aware while your muscles stay frozen. An underdose of anesthesia can happen for a lot of reasons. Sometimes it's just a goof. A vaporizer gas tank gets disconnected or is empty. The physician has the vaporizer on thinking that they're providing anesthesia to the patient, but they really are not. They're undergoing surgery with no anesthesia. Undergoing a surgical procedure with no anesthesia, I mean, that's, that's not defendable. Anesthesia awareness happens to about one out of every 1,000 patients. Most are awake and aware, but not in any pain. When you schedule surgery, ask your surgeon if you need to be asleep, because sometimes numbing just the surgical site could work instead. No good doctor ever means to hurt you. Doctors and nurses and everyone who takes care of us are just like us, human, and make mistakes. Now you can help them get things right. I'm Elizabeth Cohen, and I hope this hour makes you an empowered patient.